buenas tardes y bienvenidos. Actually, hold on. I have the SAP channel on. Can you hear me now? I think I can take this off right now. Welcome, everyone, to the Literacy Center's 27th annual celebration event and the first and hopefully only virtual celebration. Um, help us spread the word. Set up a watch party right now on Facebook. We want to get as many people on, on, on this channel right now. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Omar Cuevas. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for your Grand Rapids Chamber of Commerce. And I have the honor of serving on the Literacy Center Board of Directors. And tonight, I'll be serving as your MC for the evening, joined tonight by Wendy Falb, Executive Director of the Literacy Center. Wendy? Thanks, Omar. You've been an awesome board member. Uh, why don't you take a minute to tell us what drew you to the mission and, and made you decide to join our team? You know, this was uh, a, a, an opportunity for me to be able to give back um, of my time, uh, my pleasure. Um, it, and it dates back to uh, my experience as, as, as a kid uh, serving as an interpreter for grandma, um, doctor's appointments, etc. cetera. Um, and you know what? You know, when, when I see the work that happens at the Literacy Center, and what it gives to the learners, it gives dignity, it gives them an opportunity to stand on their own two feet, to be able to navigate through systems, understand and be able to communicate with those around them. Uh, that's what motivated me to be on the board here and be able to serve, and that's why I'm here tonight. Well, I'm glad you're here. Glad you're here to be celebrating with us. Love your energy, so I'm glad you're here. You know, I have to say, it, it feels a little bit off any kind of celebration right now, given what's been going on in our country and in our community. COVID's disproportional impact on community colors and in on the African-American community in particular, as well as the murders of Ahmaud Arbery and George Floyd, these, these past few months have laid bare the gross inequities and truly the deep and ugly racism embedded in the fabric of our country. But I believe to my core that the celebration of literacy is directly relevant to this moment. We know that not having access to literacy has been and continues to be a key part of racial subjugation in our history and in our present. Literacy is indeed at the front lines of dismantling profound structures of racism. So I'm privileged to work on this mission and glad to be here tonight celebrating it. You know what, Wendy, uh, I'm reminded of the Literacy Center's mission statement, bringing about a just and vibrant West Michigan through the power of literacy. Exactly. Literacy is essential for righting the current wrongs, but I also wanna draw attention to that vibrant part of the mission statement. Because in the next half hour, we are going to share with you some of our learner stories. And we know these stories are going to inspire you. Tonight is an important fundraiser for the Literacy Center. And you'll see our text to give option at the bottom of your screen. Text the keyword celebration 2020 to 50155 to donate. And we'll be tracking on a thermometer all night. The best part is that any new or increased donations will be matched by Fifth Third Bank. A huge thank you to Pat Lonergan from Fifth Third for securing uh, the generous gift. And I and I also add thank you to all of our sponsors for making this event, this virtual event happen. And don't forget that tonight is about having fun while we talk about our mission. So Omar, are you enjoying a long road cocktail right now? My drink does, does not look as good as that one in the, in the video. I can tell you that. How about you, Wendy? What are you drinking tonight? Yeah, I'm drinking water right now. My cocktail's waiting for me when this is done. I, I want to know what everyone else is drinking. But you know what? Actually, uh, and make sure you comment uh, on this section and let us know who you're you know what you're toasting for this evening. But I'd like to know, maybe throw in the comments, who on uh, online right now Maybe to prepare for tonight, uh, got uh, maybe an, an, an underground uh, haircut. Uh, maybe get their nails at at uh, you know a service provider. Uh, I want to know. I'd like to be interested. We're getting ready to, to open up our uh, economy here, but.
But I know I had to get dressed up for tonight because it's important for me. And even though you can't tell um, that I'm wearing shorts, but I wanted to dress up at least from, from the waist up. Um, so I am, I'm ready to go. Are you ready to go, Wendy? Yeah, what, what I can see, Omar looks very sharp, very sharp, very sharp. Thank you so much. And I am matching up with my, my mask as well, trying to look, chic. you know, I want to look chic. Virtual chic. chic. Virtual yeah, you chic. always do. You always do, virtual or otherwise, Omar. I also want to remind everybody out there watching that uh, we have our annual celebration Scrabble game. It's gone virtual. Uh, in your invite, you got tiles listed. And if you missed them, what, we've got tiles right up here. So these are your tiles. Take a screenshot, get them down, and come up with your winning word. As always in Scrabble, it's the uh, points that get you there. So once you get your winning word, post it in the comments in the public. And the highest score winners are going to get gift cards from Long Road. We'll see. I'm gonna. I'm waiting for some words over here. I see the word pajamas from Jim Ayers, but I think he's just using it in a sentence. Maybe that's <laughs> one. I see the word haircut. It sounds like Eva gave her husband a haircut tonight for tonight. You know, we appreciate that, Eva. The struggle is real. Yes. So, um, I I'm here to remind you that this is a fundraiser, and we cannot do this work virtually or in person without you. Please text Celebration 2020 to 50155 to make a donation. I'm sure Libby's putting up that graphic right now. And we have a goal tonight to reach $15,000, which we'll be tracking tonight on our giving thermometer that you'll be able to see on the screen. Don't forget we have a matching gift from Fifth Third Bank. Wendy, what do you think? Are we going to be able to blow this goal out of the water or what? I think so. I have a good feeling about this. I think we are going to exceed our goal and then some. All right, all you cats and kittens. Hold on. That, that's for my, my Tiger King fans. Uh, Wendy, I know that you have some important information to share about the Literacy Center before we have a little bit more fun in addressing the COVID crisis and in supporting the Literacy Center's learners. But first, I understand that we have a video from one of our tutors. Yeah, we do. I know we have some tutors watching as well as learners, and uh, they can attest to the powerful experience of working one-on-one. -on -one. There's a lot of great apps out there and programs these days to help you learn languages. But believe me, these are only a tool. In the end, acquisition of language is fundamentally social. It is the strength of the relationship and the tutoring experience that drives the learning. And the learning goes both ways. Our tutors often say they are learning a lot more than their learners. Wendy, aren't you also a tutor? <laughs> I am. Rowdy, my learner, has taught me a lot. See that great picture of me and Rowdy? Look at Rowdy. Uh, we're, meeting, we're meeting virtually now every week. and. Um, you know, when you spend this much time with someone, Omar, two hours a week, Rowdy and I have been meeting a couple years. Some of our tutors have been meeting three years. You really get to know somebody. And uh, by pairing two individuals that do not know each other and probably come from very different walks of life, uh, I know that without a doubt, we are strengthening the social fabric in our community. And what could be more important than that? and now more than ever. That's right. I'm excited to share an interview with one of our tutors, Paul Conlon. Paul has been tutoring his learner, Livingstone, for three years. When COVID hit, Paul was eager to continue the work with Livingstone through distant learning options that we were providing. He was having a hard time getting hold of him. This was back in mid-March when everybody was hunkered down. And about after a week of not being able to get in touch with him, he finally got a text from Livingstone. It was a picture of him in a hospital bed hooked up to oxygen with I have COVID-19 written underneath. But here's Paul telling you about their story.
three or four years, I think. So it's been it's been quite a while. I think there are there are lots of things that um, you know he's brought into um, to tutoring that he had you know questions about. I mean, it range it would range from. Um, notes from you know his kid's school that he didn't understand and wanted to know more about to um, uh, insurance issues with health insurance i was really um i guess surprised and um worried um, about uh, I guess a week before I found out that he had the virus, um, I found out that um, uh, one of my aunts passed away. She was one of the people living in a nursing home in New Jersey. Um, so it, it had hit really close to home when I first saw the message of the virus. But then, you know, shortly after, he texted me a picture of himself in the hospital bed with his, you know, mask on and kind of going like, that you know he's he's a young man he doesn't have any other um, you know complications medical complications or anything like that so you know I just kind of had to talk myself into it and say yeah he's probably gonna be okay I contacted him um, my concern was um, his family he lives in, with an extended family so it's it's he his wife two kids um, and then he's got uh, father-in-law, mother-in-law, and brother-in-law. My concern was just with his family to make sure that they had, you know, uh, they were okay with food and everything. Um, and um, I asked him if they needed any help. He said, no, they're okay, but he didn't want me to check out food pantries. Well, I said, you know, if they need any food or anything, just let me know and I'll go pick it up. And he was like, oh, well, you can pick it up, but I want you using your money. I think the only issue that he had as far as his English was concerned was um, he was concerned about um, what was going to happen when he was released um, because they had told him that if you have the virus you don't need to worry about medical bills that it'll all be um, you know taken care of and um, then when he got out of the hospital uh, he got a bill. <laughs> He asked somebody, I don't know who, he said, well, why are you sending me this bill? I thought it was free. And they said, yeah, it is, but you'll have to call them later. Um, and so um, that's another issue where um, now, you know, during this time, I couldn't, we couldn't meet together on the phone and do this. So I, he had to go through um, and speak with, um, speak with the people at the hospital. And he did that. So I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. texted me when he got back um, home. Um, he was on oxygen. Um, the last I heard he was off of oxygen. Um, you know, I, I told him when you, you know, when you're off oxygen, when you feel strong enough, you know, we can go ahead and start, uh, start class up again. So, um, you know, I'm looking probably maybe sometime next week um, to go through and to get, get started with that. As this video demonstrates, tutoring will not only change the life of the person you're tutoring, it'll change your life. If you, anyone out there listening, if you're anxious on how you can bring about positive change right now, consider tutoring. We have a long waiting list of people waiting for a tutor. And now we have tutor training online and many of our tutor learner pairs are meeting virtually. So visit literacycenterwm.org slash volunteer to sign up. Okay, Omar, did we got the thermometer going? How much money have we raised thus far? Let's check it out right now. 
Let's see where we're at. Where's that thermometer? Uh oh. We're at twelve thousand one hundred and twenty-five dollars and seventy-five cents. Wow. We are almost there. Remember, text celebration twenty twenty to five oh one five five to donate. Omar Livingston on story is just one of how the pandemic has impacted our learners. Our learners are trying to support their child's education, often without education of their own and without command of the language. We have learners that have lost their employment and cannot qualify for unemployment. And there are other cases like Livingstone where our learners are having to navigate the health systems for themselves or their family members, and they have to do this with the literacy skills. I know the Literacy Center has been a conduit between families and community supports. Right. Because of the relationships we have with our 800 learners, we have served as an important, trusted connection for them to access assistance for food, cash, and housing. But we've also asked ourselves in the midst of this whether we should expect folks to focus on literacy. But you know what? Our learners themselves have made us recognize that literacy is more important than ever. You know what? You could say that literacy is an essential need. It is an essential need. And we've also learned this uh, spring that it's a constitutional right in our state. In Detroit, outrage on the devastating multi-generational impact of low literacy has led to a landmark decision this spring by federal appeals court that children have a constitutional right to literacy. At the Literacy Center, I can tell you we are especially humbled and honored when we witness the courage of a native speaker of English and all their vulnerability coming up, coming to us for help with their literacy. I wanna share a beautiful note I received this winter from the daughter of one of these learners. The note writes, Dear Mrs. Fall, I'm taking this time to reach out to you because of the experience my mother, Deborah Hardiman, has had while attending Mr. Emilio's class. I must mention, my mother talked about returning to school for 50 years. She did not ever feel comfortable enough to go back because of the fear of being rejected, because of the grade level she was at when she dropped out of school. But from the very beginning of class, she has been excited about learning. Mr. Emilio's inspiration and acceptance of her break a 50-year barrier in her life. I sit here with tears in my eyes because this class has improved her self-esteem, given her confidence in areas that she has never had. And most importantly, his class has provided a safe environment for her to learn. To see my mom going to the library, studying at her kitchen table full of joy and sharing her school experience. She says they are like family. It is truly amazing. And Omar, she ends this beautiful note in total cap saying, thank you for such an awesome program. It has improved our family's legacy. Wow, wow. that's powerful. It is the experience, it's, it's experiencing this courage and the determination of the learners like Deborah that challenge us to keep working hard to address the extensive need in our community, truly. How are you doing the work when people cannot come to class or, or meet their tutor? All right, here's my huge shout out to the staff and the tutors who have quickly pivoted to provide distance learning. We've been on a big learning curve trying to pull this off and to our learners who are willing to take on a digital learning curve. Limited to access to technology or internet has been a very real barrier for our learners, however. But we are trying to find platforms, curriculum, and activities that work for everyone. This pick is kind of small, but I love it. It's a, it's a picture, it's a screenshot of our weekly Zoom class, our conversation class that has gone super well. See the woman in the middle that's holding her baby. It's just been great community happening on Zoom every week. But we've uh, got most of our classes up and running and many of our tutors. It's been, been really exciting. 
amazing. You know, we've, we've learned so much through Zoom this past few months. I'm glad I haven't frozen. I'm kidding. I, I'm not frozen. I'm not frozen. What about your family literacy programs? I'm telling you, I have been grateful. Uh, you know, my kids are older. I don't know how we would have managed uh, to support our kids learning in the midst of all this. A big shout out to all the teachers out there. Uh, I know many parents that are stressed. Yeah, I have I've felt the same way about my own children being older and ready, you know, able to do self-direction. With children at home, family literacy has become more relevant than ever. It's been all over the national news how families who have low literacy, who do not have strong English skills, are the children that are most at risk in this virtual learning. We've been working hard to provide fun family activities and lessons on YouTube, digital how-tos and addition to online classes. And uh, knowing that families no longer have access to the school library, we partnered with Grand Rapids Library, GVSU, ReGR, and the City of Grand Rapids to provide books at food distribution sites. This is a great shot of a couple of our AmeriCorps members passing out books at one of those sites. It's been very popular. Families have been so grateful. Once again, we've got food and we've got books. Pretty essential. Amazing. And you know, when I think about the impact of the Literacy Center, I know it's uh, the it's quite broad, especially when I think about how you partner with local employers. Do you mind sharing about your workplace programs? Uh, you know, this is my passion. How can you do this through distance learning? Well, at the Literacy Center, we are not only focused on learner needs, but community needs as well. Family literacy, that supports our schools and our customized workplace English program that supports not only learners, but employers and employment needs. For example, right now with the current high need for essential workers like certified nurse assistants, we have soldiered on through virtual learning in our partnership with Goodwill to provide this training, integrating English and distance learning with the clinical work. But that's just one example of what we're doing. And now we're looking at record unemployment. Having strong literacy skills and additional certifications will be even more critical for individuals to be able to support their families. This training will be urgent for families to have financial stability, um, you know, because, because literacy um, is a connection to upward mobility. You know, when do you think You'll be back to delivering services in person. Virtual instruction is likely to continue in some form or another, but we need support for additional technological needs for the organization and our learners. Our team is pushing hard to get this done, but the additional financial support is needed to accomplish this. And just as our need increases, our traditional means of raising funds through events cannot happen. You heard her, folks. Uh, they are getting the work done one way or another, but we also need your help to do so as well. Text Celebration 2020 to 50155 to do uh, donate. Now, where are we at? Uh, let's take a look to see where those funds are coming in. Let's see here. Let's look at the thermometer. Let's pull that up. Remember, oh. all nice. $50, was it fifteen thousand? Nice. Yeah. Oh my God! Woo. Remember, all your new and increased donations will be matched by fifth third. I almost want to do a TikTok dance now. <laughs> I guess this whole virtual event was worth it. This is this is really really awesome. Omar, we have got a fantastic team, and Absolutely. even. Remember What's that? I said a big shout out to you and your team. Yeah, we've got it. We've got a fantastic team. Um, you know, and our our learners are even more remarkable. I'm super excited to share an interview with one of our learners. The stories that we get from our learners are so powerful, and we need to keep doing a better job at capturing them. Again and again, we meet folks who have faced serious stresses and challenges. And they have developed remarkable 
inspiring resiliencies. And it is very humbling how much gratitude they express for the way we support them, truly. The learner you're about to meet in this video embodies all of this. Her name is Carolina, and uh, she and her son came here from Honduras. When she came to us, she was very grateful for her current work. She was working as a shelver at Walmart, but we learned that in Honduras, where she came from, she was an attorney and she was a congresswoman. She had to flee her home country after defending her community against the drug cartels. She arrived here uh, to Michigan speaking very little English and began taking English classes at the Literacy Center. After uh, over a year, year and a half working with us, we got to celebrate with her. I think it was last fall when she graduated with her Certified Nurses Aid Certificate. It was really an awesome moment. But uh, here was Carolina story in her own words. Enjoy. My name is Delmis Carolina Senol Amaya. I come from Honduras. In Honduras, I am a lawyer and I was working in a Congress. The most important case was uh, when I represent to 1,500 families, they was fighting for their living place. We confront again uh, drug traffic in was a very dangerous. My life was in risk a lot of time. They put my head a price. I try to do my normal life and I try to work normal, but all people around me was killing one by one. The last one was a farmer leader. She was my best friend and my family. My two sisters said, if you want to go, now it's time. For that, I am here. I never think, think I live in Grand Rapids. And I am here with my son. I need to learn English. It's the first step if you want to live here and to, to be a good person in the society. My son and me, we go to Pizza Hut. The lady was attending us, was trying to say something, but <laughs> We didn't know what she said. Your entire life is changing. New people, new language. I know my English not is perfect, but I am learning every day. In the Literacy Center, it, they have a professionalism. It's focus in a daily life. All do you need? go to doctor appointment, looking for a job, um, everything do you need to, to come to the society. They are special people. I found special people in this country a lot, but Literacy Center have the best. Literacy Center is helping us because they receive all people, I feel satisfaction because I found that people is help me to, to do the big change. They give up support. 
Literacy Center. They put everything, all I need, for complete my goals. I think it's important to go to the school, a real school with good people, and I recommend Literacy Center. <laughs> it's my favorite place in Grand Rapids. Carolina, mi reconocimiento para usted en su jornada de aprendizaje, le deseo mucha suerte. Este es el poder del Centro de Alfabetización del Oeste de Michigan. What I said was my recognition to Carolina on her learner journey, a learner journey. This is the power of the Literacy Center of Western Michigan. Uh, I'd like to uh, invite you to continue to, to donate. Um, thank you to Seth Thompson and Aaron Wilson from Art Peers for creating this video. Uh, now let's check on, on fundraising. Let's see if we can put that up again. Remember, text celebration 2020 to 50155 to donate. Let's see where we're at. We're at $15,716. Oh, that's awesome. You know, what, awesome. you know what, Wendy, um, we need to get to 16,000 right now. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start reading some dad jokes until we get to 16,000. <laughs> so, yesterday, a book fell on my head. I only have my shelf to blame. I've been reading a horror story in Braille. Something bad's going to happen. I can feel it. <laughs> it's kid night by mines. They did some unspeakable things to me. Hey, Wendy. Yeah, where Omar. Did where did Captain Hook buy his hook? I don't know, the second hand store, Omar? Oh my gosh, you beat me to it. <laughs> what does a thesaurus eat for breakfast? Uh, I don't know. What? Synonym rolls. Come on. Uh, Where, why does Waldo wear stripes on his What's shirt? That? Because he doesn't want to be spotted. You want me to keep going, or are we going to get to 16,000? Yeah, we got to get some more money. Also, the Scrabble game. Who's, who's got the words? Put them oh, up. Let's, let's take a look. Let's see. Let's see, let's see what, what words are showing up. Maybe you can help us out, Libby. Post to see what words are showing up right now. But come on, folks. We can get to 16,000. All right. You, take, you have to text. Spellbration 2020 to 50155 to donate, it's that easy. Your support tonight enables us to continue providing literacy instruction that meets the needs of our learners today, now and in the future. Well, Omar, how about you? You gonna donate? Absolutely, you know what? Let's, let me take care of that right now. <laughs> you keep going while I do this right now. All right, all right. And don't forget that any new and increased donations will be matched by our friends at Fifth Third Bank. So send that, send those funds our way. We wanna make that match. We've got, at the Literacy Center, we have uh, what we call the book club members. And those are folks that donate to us uh, $1,200 or more a year. And that's the cost that it, it costs us to instruct one learner. So that means $100 a month. And if you give that, then we can instruct one more person in our community. I know we have some book club members out there tonight. Let us know in that public chat why you donate. Let's put it on there right there. I just, I just finished my donation. Let's check that thermometer. Any new donations? You know, we can see that people are donating at different levels. Your donation of any amount helps support our learners. Either join us with a one-time gift or a monthly donation. Remember, all new and increased donations will be matched by Fifth Third Bank. All right, let's do one final check of the thermometer before we end tonight. Have you gotten your donation in? 
Come on, we gotta get up to sixteen thousand. Let's do this, folks. Wendy, this has been really fun to do tonight. It's been an honor of mine, uh, and want to thank you all for your support. Um, but more important, are you getting ready for that drink? Yeah, I'm, I'm about there, Omar. I'm about there. I'm gonna celebrate. This is awesome. It's awesome. I mean, it's it's fun to share our learner stories. We work with remarkable people and celebrate our mission. And it's so exciting to see the generosity of folks in our community. It really, really is. It looks like we're going to do our grab a word announcement after the event. Please send in your words if you haven't done so. And we'll award our gift cards afterwards. It looks so, like we're going to send everyone to, to the Facebook page to see who's going to be the winning word tonight. There you go. There you go. All right, well, we're hoping that we'll be able to host next year's event in person at Clearwater Place. We're planning it for March, and we're gonna be able to recognize our honorees. Mark Peters, our champion of literacy, Tommy Allen for the award for community engagement, and Mariella Labor, our volunteer of the year. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks for Muchas joining gracias. us. Muchas gracias a todos y buenas noches. Bye.